Arapaho 911. Where is your emergency? Hi, are you there? Yes, I am here. A call that would change the course of three young lives. Okay, so you think your wife may be dead? Yes. A crime of passion isn't born out of love, but a desire for power and control. 71, 28, 28. I didn't think he would go out and go off the hook and go crazy. Life is different in a lot of ways. Just, just everything reminds you of you know what could have been or what happened or just I don't know. Yeah. A different life for Mazen Klaperich, one of three children left behind after the death of his mother, Ipti Sumtrabelsi, known to loved ones as Ipti. She was the, the greatest person that I've ever known. She was so kind and so caring to, to everyone she ever met. She just lit up a room that she walked into. That light was dimmed when investigators say her husband, Todd Anthony Searles, took her life, forever changing the lives of her children. I'm just, you know, starting college. My sister hasn't even graduated high school yet. Like, there were so many things that we, you know, I wish I could have shared with her. And it just feels like I've been robbed. Like, I won't, I won't be able to experience those things with her. In 2015, Ipti moved to Denver for a new job. At that time, she and her husband, Mazen's dad, were going through a divorce. But in 2016, they all moved to Denver. They made sure that the kids were taken care of in the best way that they could as divorced parents. By then, Ipti had already moved on with Searles. By the time that we all got here, um, they were already in a relationship. Mazin describes his first impression of Searles like an interrogation. I think he almost wanted to present this controlling nature to the kids specifically just um, to show that he was in charge. Mazin's mom and dad had joint custody, one week at each house. He says trading back and forth was tough. It's because on one hand, it meant going to my mom's where I was in an uncomfortable household where I didn't feel like, not safe, but I didn't feel welcome or um, comfortable. I didn't feel comfortable there. The rift in their family deepened after he says his father filed this restraining order against Searles in March 2019. I saw what happened clearly. You know, my stepdad was aggressive and punched my dad in the face, who was doing nothing. He was just trying to pick up his kids. Searles was arrested on a third degree assault charge. Then last year, things got physical again, this time with Ipti. And I heard my mom say something along the lines of, get your hands off me. And that's when, you know, I said, whoa. What's going on? So you know, I poke my head out of my door to see what's. I yell up the, up the stairwell, see so like, hey, are you okay? What's going on? Eventually, his stepfather kicked him out of the house. His mother fought to get him back. She works something out, and they allow me back. But at that point in time, I have somewhere else to live, and frankly, I don't like it. I don't like living there. I, I hated it actually. It was it was horrible. The decision not to come home created tension and silence between Mazin and Ipti days before her murder. I didn't have a last conversation the last time I saw my mom. I, because we had an argument, unfortunately, just before she passed. That wasn't the mother you knew. That was the mother Todd created. Correct. The fact that I didn't, I didn't get to say a single goodbye or I love you or anything, it was, it was difficult. Mazin says that was the most difficult time, but he still never expected what happened next. I remember thinking to myself, like, God, I hope, I hope he doesn't do something bad. I hope he doesn't. June 1st, 2021. It started out as a really, really good day. By 8.13 that evening, everything changed after Searles called 911. I need the address at 7128 South Poplar Lane. All right, do you need police or the paramedics there? We'll need both. My wife broke into the house and began stabbing me. And I, def I defended myself and 
I think she may be dead. The call continues for four minutes. How did you defend yourself? The dispatcher then asks him to step outside with his hands up. Put your hands behind your back, sir. Searles immediately gives his side of the story that it started as a fight about a divorce. She had a bag uh -huh. full of things that guy was too close. Uh -huh. And then she just started stabbing him. He claims Ipti started stabbing him multiple times, but in this video, you can't see any wounds. You have the right to remain silent. Eventually, deputies read him his rights, and he chose to stop talking. You want to sit up in the background? Inside, paramedics are working to save Ipti's life. According to the autopsy report, she was stabbed more than 120 times. She died at the hospital. Deputies say what Searles didn't know was Ipti's 15-year-old daughter, Sarah, was downstairs. She heard her mother screaming for help, saying, please stop. Uh, she, the mother called for the daughter a few times. She could hear the male half calmly saying, how's that feel? He did not sound in distress, did not scream at any point. She ran to a neighbor shortly after. Based on what she told police, it took Searles 53 minutes to call 911. He was charged with domestic violence and murder in the first degree. Like, I didn't think he would. I didn't think he had it in him. He spent the next four months in jail. Deputies say days before his October hearing, he took his own life at the Arapahoe County Jail. Now Mazin is left wondering why his stepfather murdered the woman he claimed to love. It's incredibly difficult. I, I don't think there has been a single day that's gone by that I haven't thought about it. He also thinks about the sign of abuse he may have missed. I was never aware of the kind of manipulative, controlling behavior that he enacted not just on my mom, but on me and my brother and my sister. You just, you don't, you don't recognize it. In my case, it didn't tell it's too late. Mazin says Ipti tried to take control back by filing for divorce. And instead of giving up the control, he takes it back and does something unspeakable. Mazin feels robbed and he says so does his family. That's why he's sharing his mother's story and hopes someone might see this and get out before it's too late. I would say leave now because it's not even just for your own safety, but there are so many people who care about you and your safety is of a concern to them as well. Now, if you all noticed, Mazin was alone. His loved ones weren't ready to talk yet, which is understandable. It's a hard topic, but he did want to say this. Um, he wanted to let his mom know that he loves her and that he's okay and he's still pushing through and that he and his sister, they have already started therapy. Um, definitely a long road for all three of these kids for life, not just now, but for life. Mm -hmm. Didn't just steal his mom, but stole their relationship prior to her, her death. Yep. It's just, it's that control, it's that manipulation that you continuously hear about in so many of these cases, and you never realize until it's too late that, wow, maybe I could have done something, maybe I could have spoke up, but you never think it's going to get to that point. And I, I have to ask you, I don't know how much you want to share here, I'm kind of putting you on the spot, but like, are you willing to, to share with us a little bit about what drew you to these stories in your own personal experience? Um, I'm just like Mazin. Um, I'm one of those left behind. I didn't lose my mother to domestic violence, but at six weeks she was shot and killed. So the difference here, you know, I don't know what that love is like. He experienced that, I haven't experienced that, but I know what that loss is like. And I know, you know, that was one reason for wanting to do these stories and wanting to speak with the children and be able to empathize with them and bring myself to their level to let them know, hey, 27 years later, I'm still struggling and it will always be that way. And your work on this continues this week? Yep, tomorrow night we will introduce you all to another family still dealing with the loss after a crash and a murder-suicide. That's gonna be the family of Trisha Sue Green Westfall. Um, back in November we brought you that as breaking news and you will hear from them tomorrow at 9 and 10. All right, okay. thank you Darius.